Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video, I want to cover a new self-hosted bit of software that I've just come across. I don't know how long it's been out for based on the GitHub. It looks like it might be around a year, but it's called Personal Management System. Now this seems to be like an all-in-one tool that can, as you can see on the left here, that can cover, you know, like goals, notes, schedules, contacts, files, images, videos, you name it. This is like your all-in-one go-to system um and just from my quick overview it seems fantastic so currently what i'm in i'm in like a little demo where uh anyone can access this i'll leave a link in the bottom of the description of the video of this where you can come in and have a browse around right so this is it so let's have a little browse around and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how you can install this yourself as well uh, just by following the install guide that's uh on his website so let's just have a quick look and see what this has in it so as you can see here there's a bit of a dashboard on the left um we've got the main dashboard in front of us that kind of has you know any goals that we've listed you can see here you know there's some example ones uh get a new job travel to uh, france uh I meant to say eat apples, but I spelt it. Now it looks like it says eat apes, which isn't exactly what I was after. But anyway, um, you can have little goals that you've got. So here's some payments that you can kind of track going, okay, you know, within a certain time, I should be able to save up for a guitar. Any issues that you feel like you need to cover um, and schedules and stuff like that. And all of that is handled on this left here. So if we click into goals, then go into list here, once this loads is where you'll be able to track all of the your to do so as you can see here it's real simple easy to figure out there's a little plus at the bottom right here to add add any you know list to do's you want to do so let's just go make a video i want to display that on the board submit and then we've got a new to do list here so make a video right and then here you can add all the steps so uh like record a video let's add that as a step and now if we go into the actual task itself, we can see we now have a task here. Um, and also if we go back to the dashboard, it should now show up on the on the dashboard itself as well. So as you can see here, make a video uh, not done. So it's a cool way to keep track of things. Um, payments, so if we wanted to see our payments, I'm not gonna go through all of these, it's just, I'm just overview some of the basic stuff. Here you can see kind of like your payment tracker and in settings is where you can add more uh, payments. So you come down here, you can add a payment goal, a to-do, so you've got a to-do list as well, which is really nice. And if you can have this uh, on your home network, everyone can kind of jump in and have a look. Um, they have their own accounts and stuff as well. Uh, so here's all your little to-dos. Yeah, and again, all of the stuff is on the left. And the left, you've also got a password uh, manage manager as well. So if you want to manage your own passwords using this tool, you can do it. Um, it says here that everything is encrypted as well. You might want to verify all of this on how great the encryption is. I can't vouch for it. Uh, I haven't tested it yet. Uh, but again, this is all open source, so you can check for yourself. Uh, and then again with files. So if we come in here and main folder, you know, we can upload some files if we want down here, add files. Also, I just realized that for some weird reason, uh, my uh, webcam was right in the middle of the screen. So I've just moved that. <laughs> uh, images. Uh, so again, it's just, another way to store images and stuff like that we could just upload something so let me quickly upload something so here i'm going to click upload cool download yep whatever and we'll hit upload and now we should see the little picture i uploaded just like that so let's close down here and there's the little image i just uploaded and videos and other stuff as well so it's all here uh so this is a really cool all-in-one system i know that there's other tools out there that handle just the you know the file side of things and the password side of things and the contacts but this is a nice all-in-one system. This is pretty cool. I haven't really seen anything like this before. Um, so uh, enough talking. I'm going to show you how you can get this installed for yourself. So now, as you would have uh, been able to see from the title, we will be installing this on a Raspberry Pi using Linux. Um, on here, there is a link underneath the video in the description um, for this page here for the install. So there's also a Windows one here as well if you want to install it via uh, Windows as well if you want. Um, there's also you know Docker on Windows as well. There's all the guides here, but what we're going to be doing is going to be using the Linux one because I'm installing this on a Raspberry Pi. So what we need to do is we need to download the latest PM, um, PMS version, right? So if we click on this, this takes us to the GitHub page. Uh, where we can download this latest version. So what we want to do is before we do any of this We want to connect to our Raspberry Pi. Cool. So I've got my Raspberry Pi here I've just uh, SSH into it and if I go LS, I've just got a few folders here 
But what we want to do is create a folder called PMS or just name it whatever you want uh, because we'll be downloading uh, this version into there. So let's just do make directory and I'll just call this PMS. I'm going to change directory into there. And now what we're going to do is run a wget command um, on this link here. Uh, so we can copy the tar file, sorry, of this one here, we can copy the tar file into our Raspberry Pi. So if I just right click this and then copy link address, I go back to the Raspberry Pi and I hit wget and paste in that link and hit enter. Now it's just downloading that tar file, which is the one down here. Awesome. And now if I do an ls, we can see that there. So now we have to uh, unzip it. And an easy command that we can run to unzip it is just this one here. Um, so that's just going to extract it into its own folder. So if I hit enter, it's just unzipping everything that was in that tar file. Now if I do an ls, we can see we now have that uh, everything unzipped and in its folder, which is awesome. So now what we want to do is change directory into there. And now let's go back to the install guide and see what it says for us to do. So here it's saying once we've downloaded it, it's wanting us to um, go into the folder, which, which we have. So if I just tidy this up and do an ls, we can see that we're in here now. And then what it's wanting us to do is run docker compose build and then docker compose up hyphen d. So since we're using docker, you'll want to make sure you have docker installed and docker compose uh, installed. I'll leave a link in the description on just the install guide for that. It's pretty straightforward. It's just, uh, if you're on Ubuntu, it's just sudo apt install uh, docker and docker compose. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but I'll leave a link in the description on the install guide for that. Uh, I also have a video, I believe, um, and I'll link that in the top corner somewhere as well if you wanted to watch. Cool, so we're in here now. So what all we need to do is run docker compose build. So let's copy this and we'll paste that command in there. Uh, I haven't added my Ubuntu user into the Docker group yet, so I have to run it under sudo. So I'm going to hit enter. And now this built it really quick because I've already run this. Uh, when you run this for the first time, it's going to install a lot of dependencies. And it took around, I think it was about five minutes for me. So just sit back. It's just going to pull a lot of dependencies and it's just... Um, as you can see here, it's just, you know, making sure that you've got all the dependencies and stuff installed. So once it's built, uh, it just says here that all we need to do then is run docker compose up hyphen D. Now what this is doing is it's going to stand up a few containers. And if you're curious, we can have a look at what those containers are. So let me just make this a bit bigger and let's have a look at what those containers are. So if we look into the docker compose file, we can have a look. So you can see here, it's going to build a MariaDB. Um, and here you can also see that uh, it's using some default passwords and stuff. So I recommend coming in here and changing uh, default passwords and whatnot. Um, it's building Nginx. So this is what uh, the front end will be for. It'll be running on Nginx. Uh, it's running a PHP FPM and um, the admin um, service as well. So you can expect all of these containers to be stood up and running. Uh, what this is doing, it's also going to be using, um, you know, a lot of dependencies within this folder as well. Again, this is all open source. So I encourage if you're a bit, you're wondering how all this is working or what's been installed, have a look through the, again, the compose file, the config, the installer, everything like that. Have a look, make sure you're happy with it. Um, and then once you are, what we can do is then run the docker compose up hyphen D. So sudo docker compose up hyphen D. So I've, in many of my videos, I explain what this command is, but I'll, I'll explain it again. So what this is doing, um, I also need to remember to put the hyphen in there. Um, what sudo docker compose is doing is it's looking at that docker compose yaml file that we have in this directory. It's going to say, okay, what's in here and what's it asking me to do? It's going to then build everything up, hence why we're saying up. And hyphen D means it's running in detached mode, which means you won't see the logs and stuff like that. It's just all being done in the background. And then once we close our session and stuff, the containers will continue to stay running. If we were not to run in detached mode, and once we close our session, all those containers drop. And we want this to continue running, right? So um say yep we're happy we hit enter and now it's creating those containers for us awesome and now what it's saying is we actually need to um hit into one of our containers to run a command so there's a a shell script in there that we need to run for everything to stand up so here's the command here so if we just copy this we paste that in again I, i've got to use sudo now hit enter 
and then it's going to put us inside of that container so this here is actually the the container id of one of the containers we stood up and uh, more specifically the php fpm container now what it's asking us to do is actually just run this here so what we're doing is running that shell script and this will finish the setup of the container so let's paste this and hit enter and now as you can see it's downloading um, some more of the packages that it needs and it's just going to finish the install for us and then once this is finished we should be able to hit um, the ip address of our raspberry pi on port 8001 and we should get um, personal management system so you can see here it's creating like the databases and stuff like that cool so it looks like it's all finished now uh, we're back to our prompt here so i can actually exit out of this container and now what i can do is I can browse to, uh, I can't browse to this because I'm technically not running it on my local host. So this will be actually the IP address of my Raspberry Pi on 8001. So let's give this a try. So this is the IP address here at the top. It's a bit small um, because um, I'm on a bit of a widescreen here. But as you can see at the top, uh, this that's the IP address of my Raspberry Pi on port 8001. So I'm going to hit that. Now it's loading. And there you go. So now we've hit the login. So it says here, uh, let me make this full screen. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see. Uh, no existing user was found. Please continue with registration. Okay, let's hit register and let's put a username, TikToks, email address. Uh, I'm just going to go test at test.com. Password, let's just put some random stuff in here because uh, this won't be surviving after this video. I'll hit submit and now it's going to create that user for us. Cool, uh, new user record has been created. Now let's put TikToks, put in my password and hit login. And just like that, we have our personal management system all up and running. So now I'm free to add any passwords I want in here, um, any goals I want, anything like that. So um, nice and sweet. If you actually want me to cover more of this, uh, you know, just, you know, possible ways to use this, integrations, just whatever, um, I'm more than happy to make another video on it. But to be honest, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you just have a look and play around. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I was actually pretty excited when I found this uh, It's definitely going to be something I'm going to use in my uh, self-hosted collection um, But yeah, thank you very much everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye